Okay, let's get started. Uh, this is the setup for the N scale gate crossing. So we've got the motor here. We're using our power module. We have the single gate here. I built this little stand. Uh, a couple of things right off the bat. I really recommend that you get a couple of pieces of scrap wood, build a little platform, drill a half inch hole, and uh, make use of this uh, demo setup before you put that out on your layout. You're gonna really, uh, you're gonna really appreciate doing that later on, all right? So the first thing we have to do is uh, get these wires out of the way. Uh, so they're all off to the side. Feed this down through the hole. I'm using the one inch uh, setup. So we got three quarters plus a quarter. And uh, in this case, I'm gonna show you how to cut a custom wire. Um, and then uh, at the end, I'm gonna show you how it comes with the one inch wire already set up. But uh, anyway, just slide this in. Uh, next rule, never grab any of this part of the contraption. It's 3D printed. Uh, we've upgraded the resins to try to make them harder uh, and more resilient, but it's still uh, very delicate. So you can push and pull on the plug all you want, uh, and we'll, we'll come back to getting the plug out. Actually, let me just do that right now. So how do you get the plug out? So one of the ways is to push it from the bottom, but I don't have the screwdriver. Okay, so we're gonna, we'll get that later. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is just connect this to the gate controller. And this is a five pin connector, a four pin on the right, five pin on the left. This won't go in here. It'll only go one way, the smooth side up, the uh, wired side down, and just uh, insert it in there gently. And what I'll do is just take my fingernails and push that in, all right? So uh, the next thing is uh, all of the gate controllers come with this plug in the wire. It's 24 inches long. I'm using the power module and you can plug these wires any which way as long as they're on two adjacent terminals. Uh, essentially it goes plus minus plus minus plus minus all the way across here. We didn't label them because any two adjacent wires will work and the polarity for the gate controller doesn't matter. Okay. So uh, let's turn it on, and the first thing that's going to happen here is the light is going to come on, it's going to blink five times, and then go off. All right, now if it happens to, now you can see the heartbeat. So every about four seconds the heartbeat goes. Now it's possible, uh, you'll notice this dial here. We used to have a screwdriver and everything, we've changed this dial. This makes things much uh, much easier to manage. So this is a trim potentiometer, trim pot we call it. And you'll notice it's white. If I slide this in either direction, the white disappears and the light comes on, all right? So this is gonna be used to, to adjust the brightness, the speed of the uh, flashing, and the adjustment for the motor. And so it works uh, in the following way. It has a center position off, all right? When you turn it one way, the dial activates the motor and these things and makes them brighter or faster, whatever, in one direction. If you turn the dial the other way, it, it does the opposite. You know it's in the center position when the white is showing neatly on, on both sides. Okay, so you can see that. All right, I hope you can see that. Okay, so next thing that we're going to do uh, is review the, uh, the, the instruction card here. So this is in your, in your book. And there are two ways to do configurations. One is when you just push the button uh, over here, it's called the select button, and you just push it and, and this is what will happen. So if you push it once, it saves or exits a particular mode that you might be in, and we'll use that uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, manual mode actually activates the gate in manual mode, makes it go down and wait. You push it again twice and it will come back up. All right, we won't use that right now or any of these on the, on the immediate mode, uh, but what we will do is use the configuration mode, and I want to show you how that works. All right, so you can adjust the brightness of the LEDs, and we want to do this first. This is one of those cases where we're, we're not out on the layout. We just have the lights hooked up, and I want to adjust the LED 1 and 2, essentially the brightness 
of the two lamps. So the way to do that is to press and hold the configuration button, I'm pressing and holding, until the light comes back on and starts blinking, okay? All right, now to adjust the LEDs, I press the button five times. One, two, three, four, five. And the LEDs come on. Now they're gonna be on at the brightness of the middle position. So if I dial this up, they become brighter. If I dial this to the left, they extinguish or go brighter or less bright. All right, so whatever setting you want, uh, that's it's just newly set each time. So it doesn't really remember it once you go into this mode. It's whatever the dial is set. Now, let's say that I want to set it right about there, not too bright. Um, and the way I finish this is with the save exit. So I'm going to press this once. And you'll notice the light didn't go out because, and it's going to stay on, because I haven't returned this to the center position. Remember, I was adjusting it for the light. Now, to get everything back to uh, operating mode, I move this to the center position, and you'll notice that the lights went out. So that's the way that works. Uh, there is an adjustment for an LED uh, 3 in here, and that's for use when we get to the semaphores, and that's coming uh, later in a, in a few months. Uh, the next thing you can do is adjust the flash speed. So once you've saved an exit, you're out of configuration mode. So to enter configuration mode again, I do the same thing. I'm going to hold the button. The light will stay off and then come back on. I release the button and the blinking tells me I'm now in configuration mode. I want to adjust the flasher speed. So I'm going to push this seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can see that it's relatively slow. And again, we have the trim pot in the center position. So if I want to make this go faster or slower, I adjust this dial. So I can make it go really fast or I can make it go really slow. And just adjust it to the speed that you would like, something like that. Now you notice I'm out of the white zone right here. So when I push to save, the lights will go on and stay on until I adjust this dial back to the center position and we're all done. So that tells me uh, the lights are working, the controller's working, that's the basic setup for step number one. Okay, let's go on to the next step. We're going to hook up the motor and we're going to just play with the motor outside of the uh, setup there. I just plug it in, same sort of deal. And a couple of things about the motor. Uh, four wires, four wire connector. There's a little uh, gear here, and you can see in the end scale version there are three holes. Uh, magnets on top, so the orientation is going to be like this under the layout. Now when you get this, the holes aren't, the, the wheel may not, it more than likely is not going to be in the position you want to start with. But for now, the first thing we want to do is make sure that the gate controller is driving the gear. So we're going to use the manual mode here. Uh, I'm going to use that quite a bit as we set this up. So I'm just going to push the button twice. And the lights come on as before. And now you should be able to see the motor moving. Okay. And it's moving in a clockwise direction uh, because that's the way the motor goes for the down position. For the up position, so it's, it's, and it's in the down position here, uh, we're going to press twice again, and it's going to go counterclockwise to get back to the up position. All right? Now, the distance, uh, let's let that finish up. Okay? So the next thing, actually, I'm going to uh, put this on its side. The reason for this is I can move this around and play with it. I'm going to tape, uh, simply use some scotch tape and tape the wires so they're out of the way. Leave a little bit of slack, but not much. Okay? All right, so we just have uh, your kit comes with a pre configured wire that looks like this. Okay? And notice that the angle is bent on the same side 
uh, it's not based on uh, perpendicular. So you can make it this way or this way, or one where this is to the right and this is to the left, but don't make it to the right and then out. All right, so that there's some more information in the manual about that. Okay, so that's what it's going to come with, and you're going to just be able to uh, put the, the metal pad in, put the motor on, and pretty good chance it's going to be very close to the one inch setting, and we've pre bent the wire. In this case, uh, the wire is for a case where maybe you have to have the wire remotely uh, further away. Maybe you have a lot of foam or scenery, um, and so your platform might be down here, and we give you this extra length of wire, and we're going to show you how you, you set it up and bend it. So right now we're going to assume that it's at the platform for the one inch plug, and that's the, the, what we're doing here. So the first thing really simple is, uh, I'm just going to take this. Now you know that the gate is going in this direction, right? So what we want is the motor to be perpendicular to that. All right, so we're going to put the motor down on this side, and I'm just going to put this little uh, pad. You get two of these. So this one is going to be for our test board, and just mount it there. Don't cover the hole, just pass the hole. And as I said, we love magnets here at Model Train Technology, and the motor slides around a little bit, uh, and it will f uh, feed into there. Now. What we're going to do is bend the rod so it fits into one of these holes, and when the motor turns, the arm goes up and down, okay? And we want to have a bias a little bit away from the arm, uh, particularly for the one-inch plug, uh, so just move it slightly off-center. It'll work in pretty much a, a whole bunch of situations here, forward and back. It's pretty flexible, and even if the arm gets too much, the, mag the, the arm may push the, mag the motor off the pad, and it was, it'll do that sort of as a fail-safe so it doesn't break it. So that was quite an interesting uh, design feature that we, we built in. Okay, so uh, I've measured this already. For the N-scale arm, the distance that the, the wire travels is 5 millimeters. That's pretty short. So on this motor, the, the, the hole that travels from the top going around to the bottom is the smallest hole. It's five, uh, it's five millimeters, uh, right there, okay? So that's the hole that we want to use. Now there are two other holes that are further away and can travel a further distance. And the purpose behind those, and we'll get into that a little bit later, but the basics are that if the motor ends up not being in the right place in the distance, uh, you can still use these other holes to help you uh, pick one of the holes, and then adjust the amount of rotation to satisfy moving the arm up and down. So there's a lot of flexibility. Uh, we're going to use the standard middle hole, which is designed for uh, the, the one inch, uh, so the travel for the standard plugs. All the plugs, they're all set up. The wire's bent differently, all right? So that's the first step. All right, now what we want to do is mark the wire and there are a couple of things that we need to work on. So I've got this base, and this is one of the reasons why I really think you want to build one of these, so that you can set everything up uh, while this is horizontal, because the gate will just keep falling down if you put it right side up. So when we put it on its side, the gate will stay there and the wire will stay in place. Uh, the next thing is that on the motor, uh, you can see that the dot that's closest to the center is at about the the 90 degree position. So one of the functions uh, in the motor controller is to raise this back to the top. It really just turns it counterclockwise. It's three pushes of the button, and I'm going to do that now. And you can see that the motor is turning counterclockwise, and we want to stop it with one button push when it gets right at top dead center, which is right there. Okay, so that is where we want to mark the wire. I'm just going to make sure that uh, we're at the top on the on the box, and I'm just going to make a mark on the wire right there. And it doesn't look like much, but uh, when we take this out, you'll be able to see that. So the idea here is now with that mark, I'm going to bend the wire back towards the motor and uh, fit it into that hole. 
To bend the wire, we need to remove the whole assembly. Don't try to bend the wire while it's installed under the layout or even in this test one. So uh, what I'm going to do is just pop off the <laughs> retaining Scott's tape, all right, and turn it on side. And as I mentioned before, you do not want to pull on any of these pieces. You can use the screwdriver, a butter knife, uh, whatever you have handy. And the idea is to just use this to sort of pry it out enough so that you can grab the plug and pull the plug out by itself. All right, that's the, the way to do that. And uh, we don't need to pull it out the whole way. Uh, and then uh, with the wire out of the way, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this close up. I'm, I'm, in the, I'm too far away with the camera, but what I'm gonna do is hold the wire right above the dot, because there'll be a little bit of, uh, when the metal's bent, it'll, it'll use up some of that so that the, this wire is facing, actually it's gonna go straight back, and you hold the wire here with the pliers, not on the bottom and bend it, but on the top part. Uh, so we just bend that wire across. This is an update to the way to bend the, met, the pipe. I decided after doing a bunch of these, so th the way the pin is connected here, you can see on the, uh, in there, and there's enough room. Uh, so a couple of things, the, the wire will not come out because of this slot uh, when it's mounted, but when you push the gate all the way up, it's possible to unhook the metal and take it out. And I recommend you do that to bend the metal because a couple of times I, I put the uh, pliers on and the angle here was a little bit off from the angle down here. And I wanted them to be uh, perpendicular or, or parallel, I guess it would be. And so the best way to do that was to take the wire out. To put the wire back in, <clears throat> I simply insert it back up through the hole and turn it in towards the, the hole. I'm, I can manipulate it and then just pop it back in, okay? So it's pretty simple. Uh, it, you, there's a, you can't quite get the force to get it out, uh, which is good. Uh, you just take some needle nose pliers and just pop it out and it comes out very easily. And so as a result of that, uh, we're going to have everyone bend their own metal because what the other thing that we discovered even though we have this set up with a one inch pad um, each of the gates is just a fraction slightly different in the height all of the different things and um, uh, one size uh, actuator arm this little uh, uh, piano wire uh, didn't quite work so we will put one in the box but uh, it'll be a little bit off uh, possibly and so we're going to give you a couple of extra of these metal you can bend them yourself and put them up here uh, the angle for this top piece uh, we're already we've already bent them for you so you don't have to do this top one so all you'll be doing is bending the, the bottom one where the mark is and you can see let me see if I can get there so you can see I have two marks there uh, I did a you know measure one measure twice cut once so the bottom mark is where I'm going to bend and I'm going to bend it by using the flat part of the tweezers here, or the, uh, the pliers, and getting it uh, lined up exactly uh, this little, little spot here. So I want the, the angle to be perfectly bent up and down. Okay, and so it's not quite ready, not quite ready, not quite ready. There we go. And so let me just get my location again there it is and there you go and just bending it up just one push and that's it you're done okay and now we're going to cut this off with the other uh, uh, cutters let's do that just cut it probably don't need more than about three-eighths of an inch really makes it a little easier if you go to half inch it's just barely fits into the hole and you have to fuss with it. So anyway, that's it. That's all you need to do. Uh, reinsert it into the crossing gate. Go to the back here. Twist it so that it's facing in. You can see that. You can see the little hole. And 
There's the little hole. There it is. Okay. And now we've got the crossing gate back up and running. So I think this is good for you to be able to do this because you may want to move the gate uh, and just being able to adjust the wire and make your own uh, will give you a lot of flexibility in how you set it up on the layout. Okay, now that I have the wire bent at a 90 degree angle, I'm going to trim it off because it won't go back into the hole that way. And I just need to cut it so that it's about a half an inch, uh, right about that amount. And with the hardened clippers, it's a piece of cake. And then we're just going to feed this back down into the hole. So it's coming out there. Got to get that wire just a little bit shorter. There we go. Okay, so we're back in business and we have the wire sticking out on the back side there and I'm going to just clean up this wire and then I'll give you a close-up look of that. Okay, so now we're going to take the motor and uh, just put it on here and slide it. And if we have any luck, it will go right into the hole. Look at that. Beautiful. And we're going to just, like I said, bias it to the right a little bit. And that should be good. And uh, the gate is uh, vertical. So that, let's zoom out so you can see that. So that's, that's the setup right there. Okay, so now we're going to run it through its paces. That's really all there is to setting up uh, the motor. Uh, again, you might want to slide it around or set it. You've got some adjustment, no screws or anything. It's just the right height. And uh, the gate's going to go down when we push the motor. Let's just do that while we've got it set this way. I'm going to press the button uh, twice for the uh, manual mode. One, two. And there it goes. And it's going to go down to the bottom of the circle. Now it's a little bit low, and I'll show you how to correct that. That's intentional to give you a little bit of wiggle room, let's call it, uh, so you can adjust the, the up and down. So I'm going to send it back, two more presses. It will reverse direction, and the arm will go back up. There we go. Okay, we've got some wires and things to clean up in there, so it'll go up a little higher. Okay, good. Okay, we're ready to fine-tune the uh, motion of the gate. Uh, it's in the up position. The wheel is at the top dead center, okay? So we're going to just put it in manual mode, and it's going to go and uh, lower the gate to what it thinks is the lowest position. Now, I've adjusted this uh, to, to show you exactly what's going on here. Uh, the, the, now the wire, the hole, is not in the top down position. It's not all the way down. Uh, and so the gate's a little bit high. Not by much, but uh, so what we're going to do is while it's in this down position, I'm going to turn, pull, turn the uh, knob here and put it into the fine adjustment mode. And while that happens, the light here will go on. That tells you that the, the motor is running. I just did it for a little bit and whoops. Let's see, I think I did it the wrong way. Yeah, so here I'm going to adjust it so it gets to the t very bottom position right there. And that's it. And I turn, I turn this off. Now, a couple of things happened. Uh, when, the, when you have this out of the, the center position, in other words, when it's uh, the white is not completely evenly showing, the, the blue LED will go on solid and that tells you the motor's running. And generally speaking, when the motor's running, the blue light will be solid, okay? Um, I motioned it, uh, moved the motor so that it was in the very down position. And once I turn this back to the center, meaning turning off the motor, it records what that position is in the stepper motor. So it knows how many clicks, if you will, it took to get to that bottom. So we're going to go back up to the top. We're going to 
manual mode, we're going to activate it and have it go, uh, have the arm go back up. And so that's still the top dead center position. And now we have a new revised lower position. I'm just going to activate the gate again and it's going to go down. And that's it. Okay, so uh, you can fine tune that uh, quite a bit, um, and uh, but that's the basic concept. Uh, we we custom cut the wire, we custom adjusted the the spinning of the wheel. Now in this case, the wheel since we're using this center, uh, this hole that's closest to the center, we're using the entire rotation. Well, it's really half rotation to go the five millimeters that is necessary for the gate to go up and down. If we were to use one of the other uh, holes, uh, we would get more than five millimeters of tra uh, travel, which means that if we started the hole at the top dead center uh, and ran it down, it, it, the motor would, would push off or something like that. So what you have to do is uh, adjust both the top and the bottom uh, so that you get exactly the five millimeter movement using another hole. So it's still going to be five millimeters going up and down. You're just using a different hole uh, and a different amount of rotation uh, to accomplish that. There's a picture in the book. Uh, now that I've explained it, I think that picture in the book will make a little bit more sense. But the idea is you can use any hole as long as you create a start position and a stop position uh, that makes the, the arm move in a five millimeter increment. That's for the N scale. Uh, the HO uh, is, is a little bit longer than that. Okay, so that's how that works. And that'll be particularly the case uh, more than likely if you have a very long extended wire, even though you can try to cut it so that it matches the hole, that's the ideal you know, in the layout, foam adjustments and so forth, um, it's, it's designed to give you almost complete control over how much uh, movement there is and which hole you want to use so that it fits the, uh, the, the uh, motor here. All right, so that's the concept there. Now, I'm going to start it in the back up into the up position. Just press the button twice. And it's going, and I'm going to kill the power. Now, the motor does not remember where the stop top position is. It just remembers it uh, based on when it was powered up. So you want to have all your gates always in the up position when you turn off the power. Don't do it while they're in motion. But things happen, right? The power could go off or disconnect it or whatever. Uh, so now it doesn't know. It thinks this is the top dead position. But we st it still does remember how many ticks it took to make that revolution, that adjustment. So what we can do, we built in a, a feature for that. So we let this, the controller start up, the flashers are on, the light is off. Now I'm going to push this three times, uh, not twice, but three times, and I know it's going to always go in the up position. When you use manual mode, it goes down for two pushes, then you push it again, it goes up for two pushes. If you use three pushes, it'll always go in the up direction and I'm going to use the one push button to stop it. So one, two, three, the motor will go, and as soon as it gets to the top center, I press the button once. And now it's recalibrated, we can do the manual mode, and it will go down, that is now the starting position. So uh, that's another reason why we changed uh, things around here. Uh, so you can see, well, let's go back up. It's not quite the top center. Let's go back up again. And there it goes. All right, so now if you have to adjust it a little bit, you can also adjust at the top. All right, so uh, using this, having this wheel here, instead of trying to do this with a screwdriver, it's just a whole lot easier. So you can adjust the top. Now we should get a a more complete movement of the gate. Okay, and we can uh, we can adjust it further if you we'd like. Okay, so that's the setup for configuring and adjusting the gate motion. All right, <clears throat> one other piece of advice after uh, going through 
uh, dozens of these in, in practicing and installing, I uh, recommend that you cut the wire to about a quarter of an inch. I had in an earlier part of this video talked about a half inch, but uh, because of the way this sets and the hole being a half inch, uh, this little end get, got caught up in the hole several times. So when you put this in the hole, you want to make sure that you kind of keep this part as much in the center as you can and uh, and then it will drop in properly. Same thing uh, coming out. Uh, let me get it started so I'm not pulling on the part, I'm just pulling on the plug. What I noticed is that this I pulled it out partially. This was getting hung up on the edge of the hole. And so you really have to make sure uh, that this, when you take it out, that this ends up inside the hole. And I, what I did is I turned it uh, back and forth to free it up from the edge of the hole. So what I was doing is turning the plug very gently like this while I was taking it out uh, to avoid getting this little uh, L shape hung up on either the edge of the hole because uh, it was pushed over or on the edge of the rough cut uh, plywood or if you have styrofoam, you know, whatever that is. So that, that helps you get this out uh, without damaging anything and keeping all the, the parts intact. So that's a, a good just sort of how to recommendation. Um, one other thing, uh, we <laughs> while we're at it, we have this just this sample piece. Uh, there's a little circuit board here, and the reason for the circuit board is I got tired of soldering these very fine wires and trying to twist them and solder them to other wires. So we made this little circuit board. It takes about 10 seconds for me to solder or the team to solder the uh, connections of the four wires, and then there's a three-wire junction for uh, the part that plugs in to the circuit, and uh, that works just great. So that made all of that way easier. And uh, there you go. So hope you enjoy that. If you have any questions, uh, call us, email us. Um, we'll be happy to, to help you however we can. Thank you. For this last segment, we're going to talk about a situation where the wire doesn't line up quite where you want the motor to go. Uh, we're going to use the HO crossing, but the technique uh, is the same. We've been using the N-scale crossing gate uh, so far in these in this video. Um, we're going to use the HO one here, but the principle is the same. So uh, there's some step-by-step -step instructions in the manual on, on what we're going to do here, but uh, video is going to be much easier. So right now the motor uh, wheel is just in a kind of random place. So the first thing that I want to do is move it so that the second dot is in the top dead center. Top dead center is facing up that way through the layout. Uh, now the first hole, we, as we used, uh, the wheel looked a little different, uh, but this is the wheel that, that is the production wheel. That first hole is for a, uh, N scale, and that means that when the hole goes from here to 180 degrees, the distance that the, the wire will travel will be 5 uh, millimeters. Uh, but the H01 is going to be a little bit longer than that, so we need to adjust. And the second hole, out of the, this, as default, is the one to use for HO. Now this, I bent this wire in a little bit of an odd position to demonstrate what happens when you do that and not to worry and not to panic because there's a way uh, to make the gate crossing work just fine. And uh, we took that into consideration. That's why this is so simple. Um, it's actually quite elegant in the sense that you can make a lot of fine tune adjustments and, and make it work um, however you have it set up. So uh, what we're gonna do is use the uh, top alignment uh, mode, which is three push buttons, so one, two, three, and always the, that mode, top alignment, as shown in the chart, uh, is going to go counterclockwise, and you can see the top dot now is coming into play at the very top of this, sort of up is that way, and what I'm going to do is stop it when the second dot gets to be about top dead center because that's the standard HO uh, hole location. So I'm going to push this wire up so that the uh, gate is in the up position. I don't know if you can quite see that. Yeah, you can see that at the top of the screen. So in that case, um, the hole location that we have now would normally be the top dead center. And it's, it's close. It's not perfect, but it's close. Okay. 
so we can fine tune that. Now, um, if you now normally the gate arm isn't perfectly vertical, uh, so this would be perfect. This would be fine. But what happens is I'm going to do manual mode now, which is going to make this go 180 degrees. And there it goes, two presses, and the motor's moving. You can see the arm coming down. And it's now at the bottom, and it stops. That's what it's supposed to do, 180 degrees. And the arm is not quite all the way down. So uh, if, you, if that's okay with you, that's, you can leave it that way. And because it's at the bottom, there's no way to make it come further down. So what we're going to do is we're going to release the motor, have it go back up to the top dead center. Okay, and that's where we were before. But I want to use the next hole. Uh, because that'll allow me to pull that gate down a little bit further and fine-tune it. So one, two, three. It's not going to go very far. And now that other hole is top dead center. And what do you know, that hole slide, that, uh, slides right in there. And actually the gate is a little bit more vertical at the moment. So that might be uh, desirable. And that's how you do it. Now if we run this all the way down, it's going to pull the gate further than it's supposed to because that travel distance is too far. So I'm going to slide it off the pin. This is a critical step. Slide it off the pin and then go into manual mode. Okay, the, the wheel is going to turn by itself. All right, and you can see that not only did the, this third hole go past uh, the, the bottom, but it's, uh, it's going to be quite a distance. Uh, it would be further than the gate arm. It doesn't go down that far. So what we want to do is lower this to approximately the, low, the horizontal position of the gate. So I did that with my finger. And now I'm going to go backwards uh, using the thumb wheel so that I can find the place where that hole will fit perfectly right there. Okay, so that's the third hole. One, two, three. And the gate is in a perfectly horizontal position. Okay, that's what we want. So now I'm going to push the manual mode to make it go up to back up to top dead center. One, two. And now the gate is perfectly vertical and you're all done. That's how easy it is. So uh, again, don't try to do the, use the other three holes, one, two, three, the longer ones connected to the, the wire. Pull the motor away and practice with getting the, the holes in the right location, top center and bottom. And then you can mount the hole in it just slides. It'll just slide right in and we'll make it go down again. And I have the lights unplugged just to keep things simple. Don't worry about the lights not working. Uh, so now that gate arm is going to go all the way down. Okay, and it's even even we can make it go a little further. So we could fine tune using the thumb wheel, and the controller remembers that location, and and uh, and it will go up and down from there. You might have to do it a couple of times just to fine tune it as as the, uh, the wheel and the motor get uh, synced up. So in this case, the, the wheel is not turning 180 degrees. It's turning something less than 180 degrees. And that's fine. That range is enough with the outer uh, holes uh, to move the gate arm up and down. So a couple of different things. If, the, if for some reason it was way off, like down here, uh, again, you know, quite a number of millimeters off. You could still find the adjustments uh, to make the gate work uh, just fine. All right. So that's uh, the case where, well, you didn't bend it quite perfectly, uh, but that's okay. And just put this back in and adjust that a little bit, and there, there you have it. Okay. So. 
that's the end of this tutorial. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Hope that was useful. Um, email me or email the support team, support at modeltraintechnology.com. And of course, you can always call us on the phone, 407-242-5436.